Hey there viewers and welcome back to Grumpy Monkey Garage where we're adding another one to the basic series. We're going to do a vehicle health check on the old S10 that hadn't been started in a while. All right, so starting out, we're gonna start very basic, which is how to open the hood to be able to get to see what everything's doing. Now, under here, we're using the Dodge because it's bigger as a good example here. You have your kick pan of the dashboard, and underneath here, there's this little writing that says hood. And this is a common place to put the hood release. You'll just pull it towards you, and it'll open the hood. But let me show you on some other cars where it would be so you have some places to look for your make and model. All right, some other places it can be, like on this Kia and on a lot of Hondas, is actually instead of being on the kick pan here, it'll be on this A-pillar part of the door area located right here. So that's somewhere else to check. All right, so the next step after you've pulled the hood release is obviously opening the hood. Once you pop it, you'll get a little gap here, and the hood will be kind of loose, but you still can't open it because you have to push a button or a hook in this case. I'm gonna open it to show you a little easier. When I had my hand under there, there's this little tab that's located about here, and I just squeeze the tab to the hood, and as you can see when I do that, the hook here releases, and then I can raise the hood. Now, I can't just let go of it because I'm gonna dome myself, so there's this little stick. It's located on this front crash bar here. It's got a hook on the end of it, and right here, it says to put your prop rod in this hole. There's usually labels. Chevy's pretty good about making stuff idiot proof. Honda's just use an arrow. Toyota's sometimes will put a little like star next to it or an arrow or prop, things like that. Um, let's show you some other hood designs. All right, so on this big Dodge truck and some other full size vehicles, there's a, a lever in the center here. And how that works is you just push this little lever up. So really when you're trying to open your hood, when you look through the gap that forms when you pull it and it pops, you look for something that pushes or slides or some variation. Now on this Dodge and many Chrysler products and some Hondas and Toyotas as well, they have these self hold up struts so you don't have to put a stick up. However, before you ever trust these hood struts, make sure that you can step away and it doesn't just slam itself back closed because I've had where I open the hood to check the health of the engine, lean over it, and that's when it falls and domes me in the head. And that's, that's not a good day. So watch out for that. Okay, so now that you got your hood open and you're not gonna get domed, we're gonna talk about what to look for under here. Now, if you're new to cars, this looks like a bunch of nonsense. You have no idea what you're looking for. So we're just gonna break it down real simple. Almost all vehicles have an oil dipstick. Luckily, I have a quality vehicle like Chevrolet here. I don't have a piece of crap European product that doesn't have a dipstick, <clears throat> BMW. This is the oil dipstick. It is usually a circle. Sometimes it's a straight tab like it is on the Jeeps, but it's almost always yellow or silver. So you'll see this kind of dipstick design here. It's in a long tube and it will have some sort of handle. Sometimes it'll even say the word oil on it, which will be really good and thorough. What you'll do is you'll pull this out and you'll inspect here. There are some words. This side says men, this side says max. It's kind of hard to see because I have it upside down for you. Let me spin it around. All right, so there's minimum down here in the oil, and then there's maximum. Now between these two, you'll see some X's and hash marks. So our oil is right in the middle of the hash marks. It needs to be at the top line. So we can safely assume that this is about half a quart low on oil. Now, is that necessarily a bad thing? No, it's got almost 2,000 miles on its oil change. It's half a quart low. I'm not even gonna do anything about that, but that's just so you can tell where you're at. Now, if there's no oil on the dipstick, that doesn't necessarily mean you're out. It just means you're beyond two quarts low. So don't just go get a giant jug and just put 10 gallons of oil in it when there's none on the dipstick, because then you'll pull the dipstick and oil will come out with it. <laughs> and you don't wanna do that. Overfilling is just as bad as underfilling. One more thing I wanna go over about oil before we go on to the next thing is not just the level like we were checking before, but also the condition. So when you pull a dipstick and it's this dark, that means this vehicle is significantly overdue for an oil change. Even though it's inside the hash marks, it's very, very dark oil. 
That's something you want to check for. If the oil has not been maintained, or even worse, if you pull this dipstick out and there's lots of chunks on it, almost looks like a cake batter or a fresh mulch, that is not something you want to see. That is sludge in the engine, and that engine's probably on its way out from having that in it. Now, there are lots of tips and YouTubers who will tell you, oh, you could de-sludge an engine, you could do this, you could do that. And that all might very well be true, but if there's other vehicles that don't have that problem, why would you willingly buy yourself into a, a problem car? Just something to keep in mind. The next thing we're going to check is the coolant. Now for all of these checks, you're gonna want the engine to be cold. So don't open this when it's hot. In fact, usually in order to locate the coolant, it'll be on a cap that says, never open hot. Now you can also check over here. Here's the coolant reservoir and it's labeled engine coolant. And if you're needing to find where the engine coolant goes, well, there's a hose that connects the radiator to the overflow, and you'll be able to find that from the front radiator. Now, don't let me lose you. We're just checking fluids. Don't overcomplicate things. So when you find your radiator cap, it will always be at the front of the vehicle somewhere. You're gonna open this, and not when it's hot. Make sure you haven't started the vehicle yet. And you're gonna wanna see fluid at the very top. Now this fluid is called Dexcool, so it's supposed to be orange. Other vehicles will have green, red, various different colors. So you might wanna actually know that information before you check for color condition, but just to check fluid level, this is an appropriate way to test it. Also, when tightening a radiator cap, you do have to push down and spin in order to get it off. Otherwise, you're just gonna be fighting against yourself. So you have to push it in and spin it, and that's the only way to get it to come off. You're locking these teeth in is how that works. So that was full of coolant. We're gonna check our reservoir now. This just spins off. Some of these have like a pop cap like the Fords do, but it's pretty easy. And I look in there and I see there is coolant in there. I don't really care about the level that much. I'm just seeing if this truck is safe to drive, but I can tell you this is low. So there probably is a slight coolant leak somewhere. All right, next on our fluid check and least important, we're doing these in order of importance. We're gonna check the transmission fluid. Now on the Chevys, they're labeled on a little flip top dipstick. It can be black or red but you'll pull it to unlock it just like this. So you'll locate it. It's usually at the back of the engine on trucks, on cars, it's probably somewhere in line if it's front wheel drive. But you're looking for a dipstick that goes into the transmission. You'll pull this up and then pull it out. Now, once it's out, we're gonna look for it. Now, transmission fluid should be red. So we're looking on here. It is kind of dark. It's got a lot of debris in it. This would not be good. This would not be something I'd be excited to find, and I'm not excited to find that. There's a lot of gray matter up here. So this transmission, it's got a lot of miles on it. I can tell you, I don't even think it was serviced once. And this truck has 193,000, 200,000 miles somewhere on it. So it's, it's pretty up there. Now, some people in the comments right now, I can hear them talking, say, you wanna check the transmission fluid when it's running in park. Well, that's great for checking what level the transmission fluid is at, but to check the condition, I find it's better to do it cold. You're more likely to find that gray matter and debris on it. So I always check it both cold and after it's been run for a while on the transmission. None of these other ones, again, don't open coolant when it's hot. The next thing we're gonna talk about is belts. Under the hood, most modern engines, if you're buying a Prius or if you're inspecting a Prius, they don't, they don't even have a belt anymore. So not every vehicle has a belt, but those that do, it's gonna be running your accessories like your alternator and your AC compressor. You don't need to know those terms yet. Right here, we've got our uh, belt and it's this big rubber guy. It looks like a belt you'd wear around your pants. And how that works is as the engine spins, it's gonna drive all these various pulleys to complete various tasks. So to do those tasks, we need it to be in good shape. So we're looking at this belt here, and I can see somewhere marks where it's got some mileage on it, but it definitely doesn't look horrible, so we're gonna pass that as a passing grade. If it had a lot of tears, or it was really brittle, or it looked like it was cracking like dry rot, that would definitely be cause to replace it. Usually by the time that that dry rotted, you'll get like a chirping squeak while it's driving as well. Speaking of dry rot, let's get on to tires. Okay, talking about tires, I've provided three without the car around it, but you can obviously inspect these when they're on the car. The first thing we're gonna look for is how old is the tire. The safety range on a tire is only good for six years. So after a tire is six years old, you're supposed to retire it. Now I said you're supposed to, all these tires came off customer cars and one of them is really gonna impress you. So here we've got a tire. Now how do we get the date of the tire? It's not like they're gonna just write the date on it, but they do. So here, what we have is a DOT number. You'll find this 
on this one it's very close to the inner wall dot some numbers here that don't matter and over here we have a number that does matter 3909 that means this tire was manufactured the 39th week of 09. that is over 10 years old for this tire on top of that if you were looking to purchase this tire or a vehicle with these tires the tread looks like it's okay but we're going to show you the penny trick what you're going to do is you're going to get out your wallet you're going to get out a coin preferably a penny put this away real quick now the penny has lincoln's head on it okay what you're going to do is take this and if you stick it in there and you can see all of lincoln's head that's no bueno nowhere on this tire is it got any kind of good tread because i can see all of lincoln's head now lincoln's head is kind of a pass fail test for good bad the deeper the tread, the better as a usual basis. So that's something to keep in mind. But if you cannot see Lincoln's head at all, that's buried and that's considered a generally safe tire. Between the date and the tire tread, you can tell a lot about it. The other thing you're gonna look for is dry rot. Now where that comes into play usually is on the sidewall here. And this one looks pretty clean. The guy who was trying to sell this tire did a good job cleaning it up. But on the back, you could see these stress cracks. See these? These are not good. You see them really good right here. So this tire is beyond 10 years old, which is past the legal limit. It's got no tread because we can see Lincoln's head. And it's got dry rot. This tire is no bueno. We would throw this right in the trash. Don't need that anymore. Let's go to our next contestant here. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna find our tire date. DOT code here. It was made the 19th week of double lot, that's zero, zero. This tire is from the year 2000, absolutely unsafe. But if you were just going by tread depth, Lincoln's head is completely submerged. So somebody could sell you this tire is like new, and if you didn't check the DOT number, you'd have bought it, and this tire is gonna have a blowout. So this tire is also gonna get the failure. Big junk. Now here's an example of a tire that might be passable. We find our DOT number on the inner rim. Here we see it says 39 of 14. Now 2014 was still eight years ago. The 39th week, well that's the latter half of the year. So this tire might make a really good spare. If I had somebody who was on a budget and doesn't have a spare, we are just passing able to see not all of Lincoln's head. We've got at least his haircut, you know, hidden. So it's got decent tread. It's within the last decade. This would be a good spare or maybe a trailer tire. But I would inspect it for dry rot as well. And I would find that it has sidewall damage and a little bit of dry rot happening on this side. So again, even though it's closer to newer, it's got good tread, still fails on dry rot. So all of these, that's what I get for talking bad about that tire, huh? All of these tires fail for various reasons. When you're looking at a car, you can also check the tire size to make sure they all have the same size. Let me show you what I mean. We'll bring back our contestant here. Now on the inside, you can find, here we go. This is the tire size here, 225-70-R16. This will be written all over the tire. In fact, it should be on both sides on most cases. Yep, right here. Really small, see that? 225-70-R16. Now what you wanna do with this information is make sure that all the tires on the vehicle are the same size. If you're buying a normal vehicle, if you're buying a high-end Cadillac or a Corvette, it's not uncommon to have the front two tires be one size and the back two tires be larger. Same with the Ford Mustang. So. That wouldn't really sky me away, but on a regular car like this Dodge pickup or the Kia we showed you, more my S10, you wanna make sure all the tires are the right size. So that's how you tell the size, the tread depth, and how old it is, plus to watch out for dry rot. Hopefully those tips help you. So that's how you do a health inspection on a vehicle, checking all the fluids, the belts, and the tires. Hopefully this can help you when you're doing your inspection if you're just starting out as a technician, or as a buyer's guide, if you're somebody looking for a used car, this can help you tell a couple of things out there. We look forward to seeing you next time here on Grumpy Monkey Garage. Have a good one.